streaming. Let's see. See if it picks us up. Come on, people now. And Smile then I'll, on uh, your brother, everybody. That's right. Ah, I see you got a, uh, a bottle of something there, Mr. Tommy. I do. I <laughs> Very prepared. nice. It is PETM 100, I mean. <laughs> can't prepare tonight. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Let's see. Let me tweet this out with the link, and we'll we'll get going here shortly. Uh, PTM one hundred with. Mm, Sean, you got to talk now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I saw something. Uh, you posted some pictures yesterday uh, with some buddies. Y'all did some uh, some racing collaboration stuffs over at Las Vegas. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously that's probably your work, but right. And I was over at uh, Spring Mountain. Uh, where I work, which is the official driving school of Corvette, they did a, an event for General Motors out there at the Speedway, which was really awesome because I was kind of one of the only guys there that had experience kind of driving around the big track, which is cool. Um, and so for some of the kind of the hot lap stuff that we did, you know, we were going around there 140 miles an hour around Las Vegas in Corvettes, which is pretty cool. And so one lap that I did, which is kind of a special request thing, um, I was doing 165 going off into turn one in a Corvette, you know, with just a regular seatbelt on. And I was like, well, this is kind of wild. <laughs> the regular seatbelt. You know, so, yeah, just a regular seatbelt and a, just a helmet on. And I was like, well, this is pretty intense. And somebody in the passenger seat, by the way. Uh, so I was like, well, this is kind of an interesting thing. But I, I thought it was so cool that, that I was allowed to do that. And they, they let us do that. And, we get those kind of cool opportunities that come up every once in a while with General Motors. So, I'm a I'm a Chevrolet guy uh, by profession now officially. So I'm kind of stuck. I don't think I'm, I think I don't think Martin's Motorsports is going to be switching from Chevy anytime soon. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, you got some props from uh, YouTube here about your uh, headphones. So oh, is that, oh yeah, already the free, the free the free upgrade this Christmas here. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's funny. Yeah, Tommy, y'all, he's gone professional on us. Uh, he's, uh, he's got the blue Yeti microphone. He's got the, the super <laughs> headphones, all that stuff. I'm going to need one of those shirts. I mean, I got my Tommy guns shirt on. <laughs> Tommy I, I guns. just, I, love that. I just, uh, just clicked onto the, uh, the YouTube vid. So now <laughs> I'm, I'm officially a little bit behind y'all, but at least I can see you now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. So you're seeing what I see then. So Rusty's got like the yeah, I got in the, the moment and I've got the YouTube. So <laughs> I'm a little behind. I'm trying to respond to folks over there on the old chat. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's going to be fun. Let's have some fun. Tommy, I would run through the uh, show notes with you, but uh, I mean, you're, you're like a, you're a pro now. So <laughs> fourth, fourth time on with you guys. Fourth I think? time. Is, it is the it fourth just time? Fourth or fifth? Something like that. Fourth Man. Or fifth. Yeah. He's top running right what's that like 125th of our episodes yeah exactly that's <laughs> what he talked about that's yeah he yeah, said he needed right. to be on 100 mm-hmm. i'm five five percent of the episodes now right mm-hmm. on yeah yeah ptm two <laughs> 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 oh man that was an ish show as <laughs> oh our second one at uh was that our second one at bristol that we had him call in I think oh, so. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. one was fun. Uh that was That was that not was your fun. first time on the show, but it was our second time at Bristol and yeah. our only time we've had a call-in guest from the racetrack. Yeah, you know how I did that? I I had my phone sitting up against the speaker of my laptop and that's how <laughs> it worked. And it and the sound came out perfect. It was like, uh okay, that worked. <laughs> like you don't have to have all this fancy equipment necessarily. I mean, we got it here in the podcast studio, but <laughs> We get out there and it's like, eh, whatever. No, all you needed to know was the fact that like thirty minutes in, the uh, the bulk of the internet consumption was gonna just, yeah, <laughs> we knew that was wipe gonna... everything out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right, all right. I, I, rem- I remember the technical issues. We got about thirty minutes into the deal, and it kind of cut out. And you guys just went. All right, well, I guess that's a good place to leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> improvise. Listen along with it, and I was like, all right, that's fine. And so I just shot you guys a message afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> improvise, do our thing, do what we got to do. All right, uh, Sherwin, you ready? Let's do it. All right, Tommy, you ready? 
Yeah, ready to go. I just did a sound check behind y'all's back. I mean, it's like, that. oh man, I'm, I'm getting smoother at this thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> getting swift over. All there. right. Well, he's let's been working see. all those airplane instruments. He thinks he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, then. like I'm a, glad he like does. No, I somebody. sure don't. <laughs> uh, okay, here goes nothing. We will record sound, and as soon as video starts, I'm going to start my little rant. So off we go. Three, two, one. The PTM podcast is sponsored by you. That's right. Go to patreon.com forward slash PTM. Join the What You Drinking Club for as little as $1 a month and get that free koozie. Best part is every cent in 2017 is donated to sponsoring drivers. So join the PTM posse today and be a part of the sport that you love. And this week's show is brought to you by our official sponsors at the $5 and up per month level. That's Catherine Kingston, Ashley Stang, Jeffrey Whitler, Mark Wiley, Craig Smolders, Rick Hammacher, Lori Sutton, Mick Rose, Tony Salt, Colby McClam, Eric Kevner, Ryan Kiefer, Marianne Levesque, Patrick Cleary, and Jeff Brown. Woo! Woo! That's a big mouthful. Tell you what. <laughs> hey, welcome y'all! Oh, that's right. This is the Pre-Game Engineer Tailgate Mayor Racing Podcast, episode number 100, y'all. 100 for Tuesday, or for Thursday, May 18th, 2017. I am Tailgate Mayor Rusty Wallace. I'm joining the PTM Podcast Studio with Pre-Game Engineer Andrew Sherwin. What's up, dude? Century Club. Century Club for sure. Dude, uh, how did we make 100 episodes? How do you... Uh, are we wacko or are we... Yes. Sane? I, I mean, I know we're wacko. No. Uh, I, I know I'm wacko. I know you're wacko. So. <laughs> We're all crazy, uh, but I think it's because it's way too much fun to not do it. A hundred episodes to do it, yeah. To do it. yeah, it's way too much fun to do it, and way way too much lost if you don't do it. So might as well do it, and might as well if we're gonna have a hundred, might as well have a awesome guest, a mainstay, a guest. mainstay uh, of the PTM podcast, driver of the forty five Diamond Gusset Jean Chevy in the Xfinity series, and a longtime friend of the podcast, Mister Tommy Joe Martins. What's up, Tommy? Oh, what's up, guys? Hey, first of all, there we go. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so guys. air cheers. <laughs> you, you, you're going to make me blush. Episodes. You guys made it. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, it's like a hump or something. Like, oh, maybe after this it'll be a little uh, easier. I don't know. <laughs> well, so right. friends of mine that have listened before that aren't like like hardcore podcast listeners have asked me, mm-hmm. like, what do you think this podcast can be? And I'm like, I don't care what it can be. Mm-hmm. I care what it is. Yeah, yeah. Which is a very fun outlet to talk the sport that we love a lot. Yep. Yep. We get to throw in whatever we want because it's our show. And we get to have whoever we want as a guest. That's right. And we want Tommy Joe. Tommy, uh, for PTM 100, what'd you bring for us? What you drinking on today? Uh, drinking a fat tire, probably my favorite beer. Uh, so sipping on one of those. And just a big cheers to you guys. 100 episodes. What a... What a milestone to cross right there. Cheers, man. Appreciate that. And and to kind of uh, uh, echo you here, New Belgium in the house, uh, all the way over here, forever away, uh, Citradelic Exotic Lime Ale uh, oh, look, is what I've got today. Look at you guys. Yeah, Both yeah, going looking. with the Colorado, but right. also now North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I am drinking get to, get to 100 episodes and you're going to get exotic on us. <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I am drinking a Roswell local product. Uh, Gate City Brewing Copperhead Amber, Copperhead which Amber, which is a very similar brew to what what you're drinking, Tommy. Tommy, okay. I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we didn't talk about this. I'm going to be in Las Vegas in a week from today. Shut um, your mouth. Yeah, shut the front door. Right. Uh, I might have to uh, you know exchange digits or something and uh, and see if you're around or, or or something like that. Maybe maybe not. If it don't work out, whatever. But uh, I may or may for not sure. have his cell phone number. <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> it, I think I think Sherwin like when we had Sydney Letty kind of asked her out on a date kind of accidentally <laughs> on the podcast at one point. Perfect. <laughs> uh, that, so, I probably did that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Well, I'll do the same for Tommy Joe. How about that? <laughs> well, you know what? I'll I'll look you know, look me up. We'll be out, I'll be out here. <laughs> right on, right on. Or he'll be on the road. <laughs> he'll be. I'm getting away from. I'm this here. Wacko. I'm here. I'm here until our our next race, which I'm actually not sure if I've said that yet on Twitter or anything. We're going to Pocono. Oh so man, we're, we're we're going to Pocono uh, first week of May. So oh, that, pretty excited about that. That's excellent. Or first week of June. Or June. 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 Okay. June. First week of June. First week I of June. might have to buy a plane <laughs> ticket for that. That would be that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I've been wanting to go to Pocono for a while. I need I, to call that Deputy it, Rob Hines. Deputy Rob Hines, friend of the podcast. Absolutely. So we got uh, <laughs> Sherman. We've run into a little issue here. It's it's 
episode number 100 and car number 100? Eh, I don't Our, know what to do. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of different things. We're we going to start there. over. We're going to start over. We hadn't st- we didn't start doing this till like episode, I think you said 42, 45, 42 something like or that. 43. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember which. So we're just going to start over, y'all. And we'll we'll kick that can down the road for another 40 something episodes. Hell we have yeah, to figure we out will. what we have to do. So we're going to start this time with driver number zero and double zero. So I kind of have to do both the for these single digits over the for, next 10 weeks. I think for like. Almost 10 weeks, we're going to have to do two. Yeah, yeah, double it up. So driver of the number zero car, Mike Bliss, Ward Burton, both had 38 races apiece. And Ward Burton, Tommy, I could listen to Ward Burton read the dictionary. How about you? Uh, Ward Burton is absolutely one of the one of the faves. Yeah, yeah, and he can, uh, uh, I think now he does a lot of, like, conservationist stuff and environmentalist stuff. It's Hell yeah, he does. Cool. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, very so. much uh, into the... The hunting slash conservation of nature yeah. stuff. Yeah, so very cool. Um, I'm going to get back to number zero in a second. Number double zero, David Rudiman. I love love himself. <laughs> David and Buzzy. Yeah. Double yeah. zero. 140 races, two wins. Uh, Michael McDowell, 20 races. Buckshot Jones, 16 races in the number double zero. How about Buckshot? Yeah, yeah. So, Gosh, one of the greats. One, one of the all-time greats. Absolutely. I think. Sherwin, we've talked about Buckshot before, hadn't we? We've had to. Have. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> if doubt. you're a NASCAR fan and you don't know the name Buckshot Jones, I'm, I'm just hoping that you're under the age of 25. That's about the <laughs> only way you can get away from that and not know the name. Yeah. But if yeah. you've been following this sport at all over the last 20 years and you don't know the name Buckshot Jones, I start to not trust you. <laughs> well, that's one of the great things about the, the driver number segment is that even uh whether we should or shouldn't know uh we get to learn uh yeah definitely heard of buckshot jones for sure and we hear but about, there's been a couple of guys that we maybe should have known about and didn't I'd that we learned about we, we the, have, or that I that's why we do the segment is yeah uh, you know yeah it's that whole pact of learn something laugh yeah yeah NASCAR. learn something laugh every time oh i got i got a story for you i got Please. a buckshot story for you guys bring yes. it um, bring it on now this is this is hearsay, so <laughs> you guys can quote me on it. But this is one of those. Did you ever play that game where it gets passed down? You know, like you have to say the thing, whatever like password. A telephone game. Yeah, you yeah. say yeah, the telephone game. So okay, so take this for a grain of salt. But Buckshot Jones um, was sponsored by a lot of different companies, but they were actually from down in Georgia. Am I right? That's where Buckshot was from. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay, so in the Georgia area, one of the biggest companies is UPS. Is that mm-hmm. right? Correct. Down there in Atlanta. Sure is. Okay. So they had it lined up that they were going to get a sponsorship from UPS. Now, this is a little bit before UPS hopped in with, I believe it was Dale Jarrett is who they first came into the sport with. Is that right? That sounds very right. I know he had UPS. Was he the uh, inaugural? Yeah. Right. The Brown was on the 88 Yates car for sure. Yep. Right. So a little bit before that, Buckshot had it lined up. And so... We had finalized the thing. Buckshot was a local guy. They were really into it. And so it was time to get the final paperwork done. And so Buckshot and his team sent over the final paperwork. Uh, Only they sent it FedEx. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Or poop. Whoops. (laughs) Sorry. And the the head guy over at UPS got that and went, you guys have got to be the dumbest people that I've ever seen in my whole life. (laughs) Wow. Wow. And that was the end of Buckshot with UPS. Oh, man. Which is still still one of my favorite sponsorship stories of all time. (laughs) Oh, man. So Buckshot is from Monticello, Georgia. Jasper County. Jasper. Yeah. On Highway 16. That's that's hilarious. And and especially, uh, Tommy, I got to imagine somebody like you who – who works with sponsors a lot yourself and, uh, and, and works so hard to get those sponsors to make that kind of flub seems like, I don't know, devastating, but uh, maybe in retrospect, you know, you got to laugh, I guess. So you, you got to laugh. Yeah. Even with as small as a team as Buckshot probably was it. I mean, do you think they had a, like a secretary or office administrator that probably I, made that? I, I think like, it was his, it was either him or his dad that sent, oh, sent man. The paperwork in. So, <laughs> Oh man. Still, still pretty great. How would you yeah. like to be that driver too, right? You're the FedEx driver, and you you pull up to the UPS like head office, and you're going, "Uh, this isn't good. I'm gonna get smoked." <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, yeah. UPS <laughs> probably wouldn't want to tell everybody, but they probably use FedEx for their own purposes on certain types of shipments, possibly. So, yeah. full disclosure. Spe- speaking speaking of which, 
UPS ought to be back in NASCAR. I could go down a list of about a hundred sponsors that I wish were still in NASCAR, and that's <laughs> one of them. Yeah, yeah, they were. Uh, they yeah, were really good. Sherwin, me and you had well Home UPS, Depot uh, and UPS, huge yes. Atlanta enterprises, and they're not in NASCAR anymore. Yep, yep. Sherwin, and, weren't those tickets in Daytona UPS stuff? Was that UPS? Is oh hell yeah, the yeah. Budweiser Shootout booth tickets where we talked about drinking all their beer. Yeah, they, those were UPS <laughs> vendor tickets. Oh, that was good. That was that was fun. fun. Real fun. <laughs> So I, I'm not trying to bring the podcast down here, but this is a story. We have some stuff. That, that like, uh, uh, well, I'll just say it. So number zero was also raced by Mr. Jim Cook. Jim Cook had seven races in the number zero, and he won one time at the California State Fairgrounds one-mile dirt track back in 1960. Now, this is where it gets crazy. He had an accident in 1970. 1960, 57 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had an accident in 1970 that put him in a wheelchair accident, uh, you know, in a race as part of a race deal that put him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. So he's living at home and uh, and this is where it gets weird and ironic and and crazy. Fargo <laughs> just uh, Fargo had to share the story. Uh, he had, uh, he's in his wheelchair. Uh, some drifter breaks and enters his house. Uh, grabs one of his racing trophies and beat him to death with it. What in the And that's how hell. Jim Cook died. Uh, <laughs> I mean, geez. That's, uh, wow. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say other than I guess if, if I'm going to go beat me up with my trophy, I, guess, I don't know. So cheers, Jim Cook. Hats off. I mean, glasses yeah, raised. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God what almighty. A, what a way to go. What a, yeah, yeah. It's one of those like, am I allowed to like, is, is the... It's 1983, Can like 33 years ago. Can we create some entertainment out of this yeah. despite the negative... Uh... Right. Am I allowed to kind of laugh? I, you know, maybe he would want me to laugh about it at this point. So maybe we'll uh, we'll have a chuckle. But holy crap. Um, <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> while, while, we're, while we're, you know, rock bottom here on PTM 100, uh, just what, this morning, Chris Cornell passing away? Tommy, how about yeah. that? Yeah, that's a, that's a real heartbreaker for me. They were on tour. Yeah, that's what's so crazy about this is that Soundgarden had gotten back together. That's one of my one of my all time favorite bands, right there. And, I figured, and considering Cordell your is, age and our age, you know, somewhat similar, yeah. that the, there there had to be some like I was like, I, I bet Tommy's uh, a Chris Cornell fan, man. Yeah, big time, and Audio Slave as well, and he did some solo stuff that I listened to, but but Soundgarden was kind of the mainstay there, and. Gosh, I mean, I was listening to, uh, this is literally this week, I was listening to Down on the Upside. I'm, I'm kind of an album guy. I'm a little bit of a geek when it I'm comes to you. that. Uh, yeah. I listen to full albums, kind of just one right through. Uh, I know it's, we, we've kind of become a generation that listens to just like a song or two or singles. And I'll listen to a whole album. And, and with Soundgarden, between uh, between that album and, and their, their initial uh, debut album, gosh, I probably have listened hundreds of hours yeah. <laughs> worth of time listening to that guy's voice. And so that's, that's such a heartbreaker. That's one of the ones that I was, I was really looking forward to maybe seeing at some point. And so that's uh, whatever. I just feel really sad. And, and I know the speculation right now is, is suicide and yeah. gosh, yeah, you that's... never really know what's going on with anybody. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's what's so sad. The guy, the last tweet the guy tweeted out was how excited he was to be. And I believe it was Chicago. Uh, where Detroit, they were at. I think is what it was. Detroit. Yeah. yeah. Detroit. Only cause I just looked it up. Yeah. Um, so you never really know what's going on. So talk to somebody if you're not feeling well or you feel like something's going on. Talk to somebody. Yeah. Uh, somebody will be there to talk to. And, you know, th maybe that'll bring some attention to, to suicide prevention. Uh, but that's all you can hope that would come from it because that's such a terrible loss in the music community. That's absolutely devastating. I mean, that's like I said, that's one of the all-time greats right there. That's one of the best best rock voices I've ever heard in my entire life. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it was my wife who introduced me to Audio Slave. I mean, I I had known Soundgarden forever and uh and way back in the 90s when we started dating and uh she had some Audio Slave CDs and I was like, "Oh, wow, this is some real stuff." But Tommy, yeah. we've uh you know, bring it back on the bright side. Once I do come out to Vegas, we we have something to talk about then. I'm an album uh, Sherwin will tell you. I'm an album guy too. Um I <laughs> for sure. Uh, we uh, uh, we did this thing, uh, me and a buddy, and and I had a I had another coworker do this uh, where you go on the Rolling Stone top five hundred albums of all time, and you listen mm -hmm. to them in order from five hundred down to one. It took me a year, and I've li I listened to every one of those. So uh, uh, I'm with you on that totally. <laughs> 
yeah, uh, what I, like down on the upside is probably my favorite one uh, by them, and I just went over the super unknown is the other one. And that's kind of the more well known. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was kind of a, a all time classic kind of grunge album. Uh, but Audio Slave and Out of Exile and all that stuff that he did with Audio Slave. Uh, obviously, I, whatever. I'm really biased. That was a real. That was a gut punch uh, yep. when I heard that this morning. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So. Well, Sherman, let's go to NASCAR. How about that? Let's do some tearing it down here, huh? Is this a NASCAR podcast? Uh, <laughs> I think we asked that about 15 minutes in every episode. <laughs> but, uh, but let's do it, you know? Uh, went, to, uh, went to Kansas. Excuse me. Woo! This is some good stuff here. Uh, went to Kansas, and um, uh, Truex finally you know, busts out uh, doing what we knew he was going to do, doing what he has continued to do since last season, and finally uh, you know, brings it home. Well, in the last, like, seven years, he's led, like, 4,000 laps <laughs> at Kansas. <laughs> and just always found a way to lose. And we're like, and that's what spawned our, like, our heartfelt uh, mm-hmm. joke about, you remember when Truex was good? Yep, yep. And I think I tried to express some of that on Twitter this week just to get people broken in on it because I knew we were <laughs> going to talk about it. But, yep. yeah, I mean, Martin is – is Martin Truex now. He's in a new phase of his racing career, and it's a career where we should expect him to be really fast on mm-hmm. these kind of tracks and to win. Yep, yep. Tommy, how about uh, Truex's success, especially over the last couple of years, but, I mean, uh, the late success that he's, you know, or, or I would say later, uh, he didn't just jump out and be, you know, yeah, he's six-time my age. winner. Your yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's exactly. our age. Exactly. So uh, how about that? Uh, Truex is Truex has been a really good driver for a long time, um, and now that you look at the way that team is built, um, just went absolutely brain dead on the guys. Cole Pern, uh, the crew chief, yep, yep. Uh, and I heard Waltrip talking about how they built that team over there in Denver, being a little separated from everybody over there in Carolina, the way they uh, build their cars and do a lot of their things, and the partnerships they made there with with Gibbs, that was a huge turning point for the team. But basically how he's wanted to structure that team based around engineering uh, from the top down. He's got an engineering background, and he wanted that team to be focused on engineering and for them to do that really well. And you can see how fast they've been over the last, uh, last few years. They've been incredibly fast and in position to win uh, a lot of races. Uh, they probably should have won more races than they have, which is uh, crazy. And, I, yeah. and I, I would have thought they would have been one. Of, they were absolutely one of the favorites going into the chase last year, and they're going to be one of the favorites going into the chase again this year. Hundred percent. I mean, everybody have a drink. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like PTM one hundred percent. They've been lightning, and this is one of the really feel good stories in NASCAR right now. Where we talk. I mean, we've been talking about all these rookies or sophomores or even now. Uh, juniors, so to speak, with <laughs> yeah. Larson, that are really fast. But uh, we're realizing that Truex really has, like, he has the knack for racing. Uh-huh. And he's got a team that can support him. And, like, so that's six wins in the last, what is that, 25 or 28 races? Yeah. That's yeah. really impressive. Can he keep doing it? And so we had uh, we have a podcast that I interact with on a regular basis uh, called uh, uh, The Road to Miami. It's a couple of college kids. One of them's out of Charlotte. One of them's out of upstate New York. And okay. they ask people to say, um, what you know? What did you think about the race? Like if you had a one-liner or a question, I said, mm-hmm. Martin Truex continues to impress. Mm-hmm. Because he does continue to impress. Yeah. Yep. And here we come to Charlotte. And here we come. Yep, yep, coming up to Charlotte. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that, I had something profound to say, and I, uh, and I lost it in, in all of what you're Sorry, saying. Sorry, I spoke there. too long. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. It wasn't long. It was like you know it, that was good. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you're right. And and I just keep thinking back to uh, his current age, uh, uh, and and he's not like ancient or anything. But uh, uh, when I think about it, hell, I've got gray hair. You know, <laughs> like, he's and, your, and he's my my age. age or one year younger than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. so uh, uh, really, really cool to see somebody getting into their, into their prime and hell. I mean, we can talk about Jimmy Johnson is, is, you know, seven years older than that, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, pretty wild. So, uh, anyway, uh, Trex breaking through at Kansas. Um, I, I'll say we did a pretty good job. You know, we can't blow the horn today about, uh, about ourselves, but, uh, I picked Harvick and you picked Larson. 
third, sixth in the last race. That's not bad. Not bad at we all. We got beat out by our boys over at Lab Traffic. They <laughs> picked the winner and third. Oh, man. So they get so to uh, they blow they the horn the for better themselves. better average finish there. <laughs> oh, good for them. That's uh, that's awesome. So, um, so yeah, uh, a lot of fun there. Um, Tommy, we've actually got a bunch of questions from the fans for you. So why real we, quick, real yeah, quick before yeah. we dive into that, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Ryan Blaney and that 21 team. Mm-hmm. Uh, J- John Wood, uh, who runs all their uh, their social media accounts and everything, he's been really cool to me. He's reached out to me uh, several times. Oh, wow. uh, really supportive. He's a really cool guy. They've got a bunch of awesome people over there. Ryan Blaney's a great driver. Um, they brought in some awesome people, and they are kicking butt, and they're going to win a race this year. Uh, so I just want to give it. a big shout-out to them. Could have won that race the other night. Truex was just a little bit better mm-hmm. on a long run uh, than they were. Uh, so just big shout to them and, and good luck to them moving forward. You know, before I move into there, I just remember what I was going to say, which was, uh, I really thought it was cool. Tommy's perspective about Truex and Cole Pern, uh, what their focus is. And you think, and I, and I sit here and in my mind think about, okay, what is everybody else's focus? You know, where he's saying that, that the focus is on engineering at that, uh, at that, uh, race team and, and okay, well, I wonder what their focus is and wonder what their focus is. And you start just kind of formulating in your head, well, if you're SHR, what are you thinking about? If you're Hendrick, what are you thinking about? And it's really cool to hear, uh, you know, Cole Pern, engineering number one, A number one. So I, I thought that was really cool. Anyway, well, <laughs> I, no, I remember so my train of thought. Yeah, suddenly. no, I'll add to that. Okay, mm-hmm. so some, a little bit of ad lib here is that's a lot of what Chad Knauss and Jimmy do. Mm-hmm. Is Chad wants to mess around with the car. And mess he does. And... <laughs> And he wants to push Jimmy to the edge to figure out, like, did this really work or is this not good? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll cuss at each other and get mad. And Jimmy will be like, this car, he'll spin the thing out Mm -hmm. and because he's willing to drive it to the edge. Yep. And that's what Chad wants. And he knows he's going to do that. So there's a lot of trust there. Build it to the edge and then drive it to the edge. So, and I'll make, like, the jumping off point and jumping on point over to Eric Jones who has been spinning cars out. Mm-hmm. And I think most people that really respect like the technology behind what the car is doing and what you're trying to learn are saying, oh, this isn't a rookie just spinning cars out. Yep, It's that the team is learning through maybe even guidance through Cole Pern that, <laughs> look, you have to figure out like way up to the edge. Like you have to be riding on the razor's edge to win these things. So put your driver in the position to be riding on the razor's edge. And if he spins the thing out, don't get mad at him. Let's just gather the data. Maybe so. Tommy, what do you think? Have you got yeah, coaching I, I like agree. that? Too? I mean, up yeah. there in the Cup Series, uh, those teams that are really competitive up there and the teams that are winning races, uh, they are pushing the limits every single time. Um, and if one car is hooked up, generally now, that's why Furniture Row decided they needed a two-car team uh, they had the funding there in place for it, and also they knew it would help them from a competitive standpoint where if they found something out on one car, they were able to implement that on the other car. So everybody is just pushing the limits up there in the Cup Series. And, and there's a trickle-down effect, obviously. I mean, there's a lot of those teams that are running down in Xfinity and trucks as well. And so we're just – we're maxed out everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, win, to win one of these things, you have to be completely maxed out, get a lot of things completely right, and then also get a lot of luck too. Yeah, yeah, so – we had a uh, we had a popular hashtag there hashtag Ask Tommy Joe. Uh, I think you might have even I can't remember sure when you did it or Tommy was uh, was throwing that out there. So appreciate that. But uh, we got a we got a few responses here. Frank Villette, and and this goes perfectly into what we were talking about. If I hadn't just called it right here, you know, it'd be a perfect segue. But I like to call out when it is a perfect segue, and then that kind of ruins the whole thing. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, this is unprofessional, right? A uh, hundred episodes in, I still don't know how to transition. <laughs> I'm just I trying to make. You, I you did fine. I'm trying to make sure and crack up. Really, is what it is. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. You did fine. No, you did good. You did uh, good. Uh, so Frank Vallat uh, <laughs> at Frank Vallat, he asks us, uh, or he asks Tommy, uh, what makes a crew chief a good match to you? And and kind of follow up on that. Besides Kevin, which crew chief, you know, either past or present, would uh, would you want to work with the most? I've had a lot of guys that I liked. Uh, personality is a thing for me, but I think more than anything else, it's respect. That's honestly the number one thing I look for. Are you a hardworking guy? Yes. And respect. Um, do you respect my ability as a driver? And are you going to trust 
uh, the stuff that I tell you. There, there's got to be a level of trust there, which is when I tell you something, you trust me enough that what I'm feeling is the truth and you're going to make a change based on that. Because um, mm-hmm. I've, I've just had at times, especially when I didn't have a lot of experience, where you would say, hey, I think this is going on or I, you know, it feels like it's loose. And you have somebody come back at you and go, well, you just got to drive it in there harder. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Maybe that, maybe that some of that's true, but then you find out later, well, actually it really was loose or there was something wrong with the car. Or there was something else going on. You know, I, there were times where I would say maybe the brakes were bad or, you know, something feels real soft and then the brakes would fail later and result in obviously a lot bigger issue. Um, Versus where I said it the first time, you didn't believe me. So n- number one thing is trust and respect. Uh, that's got to be where it starts, uh, which Kevin and I both have a lot of respect for each other. He's probably one of the hardest working guys I've ever met in my entire life um, and really respects me as a driver. And, and I think that's what makes us a good match. That's great. And any crew chief that, that you know, you, uh, you know, maybe Kevin doesn't have to hear this, but uh, past or present that uh, you'd want to work with? That I didn't want to work with? That you would want to work did. with. Oh, I mean, I, honestly, yeah. every single person that I've ever worked with uh, for multiple times, um, they were really good. I had a crew chief, Joey Jones, worked with him for a really long time, late models uh, in the truck stuff and real creative guy and smart guy when it came to setting up the race cars and everything like that. Didn't have a whole lot of knowledge at the Xfinity level when we got out there in 2014. He was crew chiefing with us um, and he was trying to learn on the fly and we put him in a pretty tough position, but we came to late models. The guy was extremely smart. We were so competitive, uh, really at the highest level of late models in the country at the time back there in ASA and um, the Challenge Series and a lot of real competitive late model racing and big races. Uh, we were really fast, and he was great. Ronnie Smith is an older guy, um, been with us for a long time, still comes to the track and, and helps us out from now, now and again. And he helped us in uh, ARCA and late model stuff when I raced at the fairgrounds. So there's a there's a lot of guys that I've worked with and uh, – each one of them is special guys. I mean, it's like you form a bond there. Uh, maybe I'm just a really loyal guy, but there, there's so many that I, I like. Uh, but you can only have one up here at this level, and, and I'm really happy with, with Kevin and, and what we're doing moving forward. That's great. So, uh, William Soquet, uh, and welcome to the PTM Posse, William, at the underscore Will Sum 429. And I know where that 429 comes from. That's cool. Um, kind of a Ford thing, maybe, and we got the Chevy guy on, but uh, we'll we'll let it ride. Cobra <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you have any plans to expand your, or what's your plans in 2018? Have you have you even looked that far yet, or are you just riding 2017 right now? 2018 plans. Uh, we got to see how 2017 goes. Sure. Um, it's really dependent. Uh, we're we're trying to to put something in place to maybe try to run the full year next year in Xfinity. Hell yeah, that's that is our goal. Um, we're kind of dipping our toe in the water here right now. Um, we're doing something that we think is manageable, uh, running the Xfinity program that we're going to do six or eight races and give us a little bit of time to kind of work and learn and plenty of time between the races. Uh, Kevin has also been helping the 44 truck up there in. Uh, um, in the truck series now. Um, so even though we've kind of transitioned out of that, uh, faith motorsports purchased all that equipment from us and they're actually running at Charlotte right now with Matt Mills. Kevin's the crew chief over there. He's kind of helping them getting the thing going. Yeah. So he's got a full plate, uh, and we're slowly transitioning Martin's motorsports into an Xfinity team. And, and part of it breaks my heart because I love the truck series and I've told you guys and I've told other people, I'd like to be a lifer, honestly. I, yeah. I would love to be a truck series guy, like, uh, you know, Crafton uh, just like or, uh, Crafton or Sauter or a lot of those guys. Yeah. Where, when you think of the truck series, you think of those guys. Uh, but I think the financial model out there in the Xfinity series is going to be a lot better for our team. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's, uh, that's awesome to hear um, that there's that you are looking beyond and you do, and you do have the goals and stuff. So very cool. Um Mick Rose at go ducks underscore 42 Mick. Um, I wonder if we've asked you this before. I, I know we've asked somebody, but uh, one race in the world that you would love the opportunity to race in, uh, you know, whatever motorsport series it is. What, uh, what do you look at and go, man, I'd love to be right there. Daytona 500. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Not even, that's not sir. even a question. That's, Daytona 500. Uh, that's fantastic. And that's it. That would, that would literally make my whole career. I mean, and, and I have people 
come at me a little bit saying, oh, well, you know, you can never really be that competitive with a small team and you can't win races and you can't do a lot of things. And, you know, look, I'm 30 years old. I know where my career trajectory is. I would love to have a career like a guy like J.J. Yaley. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a guy I respect the heck out of. Uh, he first got a break with a really big team. Didn't work out for whatever reason. I'm sure there's several reasons when you ask him. Um, it's not that he didn't have talent. He has plenty of talent. But then he kind of had to be a knockaround guy for a long period of time. Um, but he got to do a lot of cool stuff and got to race for a long time. And I just want to be a veteran. That's what I want to be in NASCAR. I want to be a veteran guy. Uh, I might not be a race winner, but I want to be a veteran guy. And, and I think sticking around and staying around and potentially opening up that door to maybe run the Daytona 500 once or twice or run a few cup races here and there, that is fine. I, I'm not going to walk away from NASCAR thinking, oh, I didn't accomplish uh, what I wanted to accomplish. Mm-hmm. If I got to do this for five, six years, run the 500, that the, running the 500, literally just running in that race one time would be the top of my career. Uh, right. And I'm sure if you talk to Corey LaJoy right now, if it was all over for him right now, Corey LaJoy would tell you, I got to run in the 500. That'd be the first thing <laughs> that he would tell you. I, it seems achievable. That's a, that's a, you know, you didn't say right. some obscure Japanese series that, you know, is invite only or, you know, whatever. I'm just making stuff up, but I, it just see, it seems like it could be there. Sherwin. Yeah. I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, it, it, it seems very reachable mm-hmm. for sure. Very reachable. And that's why it makes sense that that's what you want to do because I, don't know. I think I want to stay around. Look, I've talked about this too. Like, could we build a cup car and go try to run the 500? Yeah, we could do that. Do I think we would probably build something good enough to make the race? I don't know. It would just depend. I mean, it's just so much. There's so many things to learn when you move to a new series um, that it makes it tough. I, I don't know that we could or not. Um, here's what I do want, though. When I do make that move, if, if we ever get an opportunity to do that, I want to know the people in the garage area. I want to know the guys up in the Cup Series uh, on a personal level enough to where when I do make that transition, there's respect there. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas right now, I, like I could go do it, but I don't think there would be a lot of respect there. I, I haven't been around long enough. I haven't been competitive enough um, in some of the series to, to build up that trust level that goes with racing and competing at that level. So it's a process. I want to be there. I want to do it. Uh, but it's going to take a few years before I would I would feel saying like saying you know what I belong out there a hundred percent running in that field. Cheers, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, got a drink. Everybody I, drink. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, I mean I I love the goal that's achievable like that. And and this last uh, question that came in, um, I this is my favorite because it gets us uh, deep into the mind. Uh, uh, of of what you're doing right now and, oh, and stuff that I love. No, no, no. This isn't bad. This, uh, I mean, it's probably a cakewalk question for you. Uh, rec at X Rec X. Um, talk to us about now that you've you know run several races in Xfinity. Um, what's the biggest or what's some of the big differences driving Xfinity versus uh, versus a truck? Okay, this is going to sound weird um, because <laughs> obviously we didn't make the race at Richmond. Um, but the speed in the car surprised me. I expected it to be faster than it was. Interesting. Um, and I expected it to be, I mean, getting into the car from getting into the truck, I expected it to be more cramped and uh, just, uh, I expected a lot of different things and it wasn't the case at all. Um, we were actually in the Xfinity cars. I looked at it. Um, the trucks were faster than the Xfinity cars in a lot of places. Hmm. So that's kind of a weird thing so it it wasn't a speed thing it wasn't anything like that we struggled with the setup um the setup on the front end of the cars is completely different uh and this is no discredit to kevin eagle because again he's trying to learn on the fly here so we're we're learning a lot of these things together Um, but they run a completely different spring and shock package on these xfinity cars and, and we just never got that right uh also i was really surprised with how aggressively i could drive it um and that's something that kind of takes a minute. And we didn't get a lot of practice time, but basically I found out I could drive it into the corner a lot harder and still get away with it than I actually thought I probably could. Um, so hmm. some just small things. Uh, but honestly, sitting in the car, it was probably more comfortable to sit in than the truck, <laughs> uh, which is so weird. 
Um, I mean, it's the same seat. It goes in there the same, but I, I just admit, I can see out of the car a lot better than I was giving it credit for. Uh, mm. I've thought that trucks are probably the easiest thing to drive because you can see so much. Uh, the window right behind you is right next to you. Mm-hmm. So you can see out of the back really easily. Um, whereas in the cars... There's a lot of bars and stuff between you and the window back there. Uh, but I could, I felt like I could see great. I felt really comfortable driving it. Um, we just got to work on some of the more engineering stuff, shock package, spring package, kind of get the front end working a little bit better. And I think we're going to be fine, honestly. I, th- I think we're going to be just fine. Is there a way that the cars versus trucks drive? Like, um, I don't know whether getting into the corner, out of the, you know, that sort of stuff. Any um, metrics there that, that, uh, are, are noticeably different? I don't want to say a whole lot is incredibly different. I mean, it's still going to be kind of the same feel. The one thing that I'll say is the trucks have a lot more side force just because of the way they're built and how tall the sides yeah. of the car, the trucks are. Yeah, a lot of um, surface area. <laughs> and so the, the runs you'll get while running in a pack, um, pulling up to somebody, uh, you just get such a big draft. They knock such a big hole in the air. When you go into the corner in a truck wide open, the truck actually doesn't sit straight. It's literally skewed out, and there's a purpose for that. It's so the air will catch kind of the right rear quarter of the truck and kind of hold it there. So that's kind of a weird feeling. Um, The first few times you feel it, you feel like the truck's getting loose, but it's really not. It's just kind of settling in. Uh, So that's kind of a weird feeling. Uh, but as far as racing and stuff, now I, I'm not going to say it's a whole, a totally different feel from a truck to a car. It's still driving it in there. It's the same tracks. Um, but comfort level, it takes a little bit of an adjustment period for anybody getting into a different series. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So I guess, I think uh, I wanted the... to ask you this last time, Tommy, and I don't know if we got into it or not, but, uh, the whole, the curvature of a truck. So we, I think we talked about how much money it cost to go to the uh, the air, you know, the air, the wind tunnel, yep. and figure out the body of the truck, and figure out how to spend more money, obviously. <laughs> uh, and what you were just talking about is like when we see the, the very expensive trucks, the trucks that tend to run up front, the Thor Sports and uh, the KBMs, yeah, Kyle Busch stuff, and, and, and the stuff. RCRs yep. and yep. and Brad stuff. You see a very truncated front end, like it's very tapered, and then you see this sort of like weird swing out on the right side of the car mm-hmm. or the truck, so to speak, to grab that air. Like, how much different is like that dollar spent in the truck series from Xfinity? Like, mm. is how do you relate those things? Is it how much bigger is the difference between dollars spent? to side force between the trucks and Xfinity? I mean, look, they're always going to be trying to make side force. I think the biggest thing that they're trying to make, though, in Xfinity is downforce. Uh, That's the biggest thing. Um, In these cars now, with the low downforce package that NASCAR has come out with in Xfinity with a smaller spoiler, the biggest thing that I know the Xfinity teams are fighting for is to make downforce. Mm. Uh, That's got to be – got to make all you can possibly make there – and then you're working on your setup. Uh, so that's the first thing they're focusing on when they go to the racetrack. And so I think that's the same way in trucks as well. You got to make maximum side force, down force. You got to do that right off the bat. The splitter has got to be sealed off. You got to make sure your travels are correct. You got to make sure you're doing all that. And then tell me how the handling is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of a weird thing where, you know, in most stock car races and stuff, the lower levels, late models, stuff like that. You're not worried about aero. You're not worried about downforce. You're not worried about any of that stuff. You're just worried about, okay, it's a little loose. Let's, uh, you know, let's drop the track bar. Let's make an adjustment here. We'll do something with air pressure. We'll do, you know, there's some adjustments you can make with uh, um, mechanical grip, as we would call it. Whereas the first thing we're worried about in NASCAR nowadays is, are we making max downforce? Mm-hmm. Are we making all of the downforce we're allowed to make is everything good there? Okay, now let's work on the setup. Um, so if that's not right, you're never going to make great speed. Yeah, hundred percent. So I got, I think I got scolded a little bit when we were talking about Martinsville about how I said I, you know, Arrow now is starting to matter at Martinsville for Cup cars, and mm-hmm. someone was like, "No, I don't 
I think you're exaggerating that. I'm like a little. I mean, <laughs> a little. They're going to do it everywhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it may have not... been Tommy Joe Martin's with it, that I was talking to. At the time. <laughs> yeah, a little. I mean, it's a little. It's it's not going to be that big of a deal at, at a track that small. Um, in fact, St. horsepower isn't going to be that big of a deal at a track that small. I mean, it's nice, but it's not that big of a deal. The biggest thing at a, at a small, little tight track like that, you got to make sure your, your car's handling right. Uh, setup wise and if you get something comfortable you can drive in there aggressively uh, you can make it work uh, so that's why Cole Witt in a small team like the 72 team out there I think he was 17th in final practice at Martinsville in the cup series hell yeah hell yeah you know you know they're not spending dollar for dollar what's going on out there in the cup so uh, you know whatever smaller motor or less horsepower motor probably not latest greatest equipment but comfortable good handling car he could be really aggressive with it now at at those tracks too the margin of error guys think about it like now you're doing a whatever lap time you're doing at martinsville 19 second lap i think at martinsville okay well you pick up a tenth or two that's a big deal out there at martinsville now so uh it gives a, a team that's a smaller team a little lower budget team a chance to be successful so, uh, question straight from Rusty here. Actually, there's there's two que- uh, or or one comment and one question. So, one comment comes from I know you're watching the YouTube there. <laughs> Stacy Coleman says, you know, Tommy needs another beer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Is, I yeah, do. Do you need us to like uh, uh, stall for a moment while you uh, while you go get that? <laughs> I'm good. If you guys want to keep rolling, I'm good. I can uh, wait. No, it's all good. So, um, where can we get one of those fantastic shirts that you're wearing right now? For sure. Uh, See, we haven't sold them. We've never, we've never I, sold them, and this is something that I have been really <laughs> lazy and bad about: is coming out with some some swag uh, for everybody to get. Um, we haven't sold anything Martin's Motorsports hats, shirts, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, we got to get you guys some stuff, though. Uh, basically, all we've ever done is use that stuff for the team. I do want to come out with some new stuff for. Uh, I, I see you wearing the. Uh, the Tommy Joe Martin shirt there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Always. We got to come out with something for Xfinity. Uh, we got to get Diamond Gusset involved in that too, and we're going to come out with some apparel. I really want to do a T-shirt, a hat, and a koozie. Uh, that's kind of the three, the three pillars that I want to have uh, that people f- can buy uh, on my website. I actually want to do that uh, sometime this year. Absolutely. Oh, you know- also, also hero cards too, because I get a lot of requests for that. I want to have that right there on the website. So I just got to get that. I got to quit being lazy. I just got to get that done. <laughs> you know, as as uh, I'll say, uh, stout, mature men like me and Sherwin, <laughs> that uh, the the blacks and the dark grays, like what you've got on right there with the dark gray, you know, that's uh, that. Uh, I'll say that color hits. You that's, know, that's the color <laughs> that hits. Yeah, that color yeah, hits. Yeah, don't put me in a periwinkle something or that. I'm I'm just gonna look fat in it, but. But you give me something gray like that, I'll make it look good, you know. So <laughs> you got to sell, yeah, you know, you got to sell that to us a little bit. <laughs> um, well, sure, and I, I think it's time to gas it up here. Let's go to. Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. I mean, we don't have points necessarily racing here, but we're going to Charlotte. Oh, there's our gas it up. There he is. Um, so going to Charlotte uh, for the All Star race, and I mean, for me and for you, because you wrote this in in the notes. <laughs> I mean, you can't talk about the all-star race without this this qualifying format. Uh, Tommy, what's your thoughts on the on qualifying at the all-star race? Is I it- think it is. The, I think it is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard of in my entire life. <laughs> Crap! <laughs> I do. I think it is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard of. Oh man! Well, so all right. So we'll give you your due uh, because that's fair. Uh, why? So as. Why don't we just state on the front end that as fans, quite possibly, this is the coolest thing that we think NASCAR does. So why don't you tell us why you don't think why it's the dumbest thing out there? It's is very, it just? Yeah, yeah. Are, are we like? Yeah, why just, do you think it sucks? Are we pandering to dumb rednecks like us with this? No, or, okay, <laughs> all right. From a competitive standpoint, I'll just go ahead and tell you the most nervous people in the entire world are the drivers when they have to come off the banking at Charlotte, <laughs> basically wide open down pit road. And all that's going to take is one person getting it wrong one time, smashing into the wall or driving it off through the dirt and flipping or something weird going on. And that'll be the end of that. Uh, so that right off the bat, that's just kind of dumb. I mean, for a, 
for NASCAR that, that says they're really safety focused and everything like that, it's really dumb. Uh, but all right. If you like the idea of the crews having something to do with this, I like it. That's fine. All I would say is don't let them go wide open down pit road. Like if you're going to make th- this weird thing, make them have to get down to pit road speed limit. Just okay. like they're going to have to do in the race. Why is this completely different? So I don't really understand that. Or if you really just want it to be on the pit cruise, have the car start over there on the back stretch going whatever, 55 miles an hour. They roll through. The timer starts when they hit pit road, the first timing line. Come in, stop. It, 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 whatever, it's over when they hit the last timing line where it's literally just on the pit cruise to do it. That's fine too. I'm cool with that. But it, then if you're doing that, why wouldn't you just make it a pit crew contest? I like that. I like that. Just just make it a pit crew contest. Why are we even doing a lap? That doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, there's just a lot of format things that I don't like. Honestly, if it's me running the thing, <laughs> um, I either go with a pit crew contest or I just literally have you walk up and just draw a number for where you're going to start in the thing. I mean, that's about as fair well, as it's going to get. Well, they kind of tried that already. Uh, yeah, they, which didn't really hit that well. Like no, down there it didn't. At, at, Dayton, <laughs> at Daytona, especially, um, yep. where they did the uh, whatever for the Bush Clash now, um, you might as well just draw a number. Um, yep. But but I'm fine with the all-star race because think about it. You're saying NASCAR is a team sport. You want to involve the pit crew. Okay, cool. Do a pit crew contest. That's I, fine. Didn't they do that one uh, or, or – uh, maybe back in the heyday, like in the early aughts For half or something. A decade. Or okay, half a yeah, half a decade there. They they had the pit crew contest, which I thought was cool as crap. But I guess it just yeah. didn't it didn't get as much. Uh, I don't know whatever uh, didn't exposure. Draw or whatever. The ratings it's, so I'll, I'll say this from NASCAR standpoint, and for all the fans, they they like seeing the cars fired up. Yep. So just just having the car sitting there in the stall, that's not going to be really that exciting. So here's what you do: you just have them go down pit road, 55 miles an hour. Or you have them come off turn four, they start on pit road, whatever, go around, they got a break, get down to 55, get on pit road, and the timer stops when they come off of pit road at the last timing line. I don't have an issue with that. That's fine. I just think the way they're doing it right now is just goofy and kind of <laughs> hokey and kind of dangerous, too, because we just don't do it. Like, you don't do it anywhere. And so it's just not, I don't know, I'm just not for something being completely random, weird that we don't do anywhere else when you're trying to say that's how we're going to qualify for a race that's kind of a prestigious thing. There's something... But they let them practice doing it, though. Uh, which there's... is even dumber. <laughs> which is, I love it. I love it. You know, and, and as a fan, I would almost use those exact arguments for why I like it, which is, well, it's goofy, it's it's non sequitur, and, and it's it's wacko, and it's somewhat dangerous. Uh, when and- Kurt Busch <laughs> hit pit lane at 161 <laughs> miles an hour, I jumped off my couch and cheered. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought that was pretty so damn impressive. Because he made yeah, it in the box. It's dumb! Got- <laughs> like it's isn't it up to NASCAR and the people that are making the rules up for this thing to go? Hey, isn't it kind of dumb that we had a car hitting pit road at one sixty? <laughs> you know, like that shouldn't be on me to say that. Like they should be the ones saying that. I am very glad that we have a, a I, well, driver so, perspective this on is this why, too. And this is why <laughs> we love having you on, Tommy, because there are often topics that we will not dis or not agree on. We will disagree on, and it's okay uh, in this particular instance for us to disagree. You don't like it as the perspective of the competitor. I love having that perspective. We love it as a fan, but we would not love it if somebody got hurt. So that's a great – I mean, that's a good variable to bring into play in terms of discussion is that we haven't seen that yet. If it happens, everybody will freak out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they'll go. Why in the heck have we been doing this? Yeah, so, the retrospect also, will be easy. And I like this because I'm, I'm looking at the chat too. Stacy Coleman saying, "You know what? Focus on the pit crews for the All Star race." I'm down with that. Focus <laughs> on the pit crews. Yeah, like it should be about the, the qualifying. There could be about them, and that would be a huge bragging rights thing. I just think making them a bigger part of it rather than Kyle Busch got on pit road doing, you know, or, or Kurt Busch. Get, got on pit road doing 160. That shouldn't have anything to do with it. It should be about the cruise. You know, something else Stacy Coleman said on the point. YouTube comments there a couple moments ago was, uh, don't forget the ladies 
when you're talking about the t-shirts. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I you do need get it. them I lady sure cuts. I have a ladies version of this. Too. That's right. That's right. Hey, we. I, I think we've already sold like ten of them for you right here. So, <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, right. That's got to pay for uh, pay for at least cost, right? <laughs> sure. Um, it's time to do some picks. Uh, going to All Star Weekend. Shh. <laughs> What are you shushing? No, oh, I'm just the I'm, fact that uh, that I get to go first because I'm I, trying I, not to say a cuss word. <laughs> uh, Tommy, uh, let's start with you, our our esteemed guest here. Uh, who do you have uh, for the All Star race? Oh gosh, it's it's tough to pick against Ryan Blaney. It's tough to pick against Ryan <laughs> Blaney. Right. He has been so fast at the mile and a half stuff. They have been so dialed in. So I'm going. Uh, I'm going Ryan Blaney. Is he in the All-Star race or is he in the Open right now? Or is he going to get in with some weird thing because he got on a pole or whatever? I don't even know what the rules are now. I don't either. He did win a pole, so I believe he does not have to run the Open. Okay, I, That's what I'm saying. I, do they include pole winners and race winners? Or is it race winners plus other yeah, stuff? I, 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 I think it's poles, it's race winners, and it's <laughs> previous winners of the race. Which, and there's like the press. For 10 years, which means... Our guy is in. <laughs> right. Okay. Not, you know what? Bull just spit. in case, just in case, uh, Ryan Blaney's not in this thing. If I have to pick somebody else, then I'm going to go Martin Truex. Okay. That's, I'm gonna go with. that's okay. not a bad pick. It's kind of like you're an a hole because <laughs> I think that's who I was going to pick. Uh, I, yeah, I, that's I, all right. What's, what's funny is I, I think <laughs> wasn't wasn't it the way they made fun of it was like it was. Uh, and I don't agree necessarily with the way they made fun of it, but I don't agree with the rule either. It was something like. All right, past race winners plus pole plus Danica plus, and you're like, whoa, 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 wait, go back. What? Wait, 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 wait. wait a minute. Okay. What did you say? Uh, okay, I see. We're just we're anybody that can do a handstand <laughs> yoga <Yeah>. pose. <laughs> see, and we're we're whatever. We've been following this long enough that we knew when the All Star race was literally just if you want to race, you're in. Yeah. And the only other way you could get in was to win the open. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there was only two ways in there, just like with the clash. If you won a pole, mm -hmm. you got in. Yeah, that it was, was it. poles. It didn't matter about race wins. It was only poles. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. Like make each one of them unique. Like nobody was complaining about that. I don't know why we're trying to make whatever. We're trying to fix something that's not broken, dude. So uh, the television stations were trying to sell <laughs> commercials. I guess so. Unfortunately, I mean, yeah, what? Uh, how many times can I go sentimental and keep picking Dale Jr.? Like, I, I have to. I'm going to punch I, you in the I, mouth. I'm just saying. It's Charlotte, <laughs> and it's the all-star race. It's non-points. It's, you know, just go out there and do something. i got to pick Junior, man. And I, I hate that I have to. That that sucks. But uh, Why does it suck, though? Like, I mean, I, it sucks I like because that you I'm wanted not, to pick him. It sucks like, because. There's a lot uh, of emotion behind That's what it is. That's what it is. It sucks because I'm not an emotional guy like that. I but know. I got I'm a, the emotional <laughs> one. You're <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, you I love that. racing. That's just what like it is. I do, just yep. like Tommy does. Yep. And yeah, so uh, what can I say? Uh, it's an emotional pick here, and, and, and I like a non points race being my emotional pick for, for right now, and I'm, and I'm going to stop picking Junior until I, and until I totally feel it, but I'm picking him today. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm going to pick Brad. Mm. Brad hasn't won an all-star race yet, but he's really fast and he's really good at these segmented deals. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what? Yeah, he made it. He made the rules for the dang thing last year, and that was the biggest yeah. shit show I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> uh, hey, that's fair. That is totally fair. <laughs> he's, uh, by the way, by the way, just as an aside here, this is why you don't let the competitors make the rules for something. I agree. The, I agree. I agree. Like 7,000%. Oh, wow. Don't because they're going to come times. up with something that's really dumb. <laughs> and just to go on a little bit of a rant here. Please. Brad, Brad Kozlowski and kind of the driver's council, whatever. This is a little bit of a call out move here. And this is not me talking crap. But basically everything that the driver's council that I've ever heard them come up with has been about the dumbest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> like they were the ones that also said, uh, we need the overtime line. Oh, which that's yeah. Probably, that's the dumbest thing that I've ever heard of. <laughs> uh, we nobody, made... nobody was asking for that except for this little <laughs> driver's council. So they just need to not come up with ideas. We made fun of that one. for. Yeah, well, we have yeah. a start finish line, but we don't start there. We don't really finish there. And we finish kind of <laughs> on the back half of the back straightaway. But then we, we finish whoever crossed that start finish line first. But 
<laughs> yeah, explain, hey, the... explain, explain <laughs> NASCAR overtime rules to somebody that doesn't watch NASCAR and get ready for them to never watch NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. Ever. I, I... Literally ever. Mm-hmm. I don't I've disagree tried. with you at all. I know because I've tried, and uh, this is going to be my little attempt at doing this as best as I can. But <laughs> I will. Pro- I promise, Lee. I'm going to make a really solid effort at doing this. I'm going to get really serious all of a sudden. Here we Uh-oh. go. <laughs> going deep because they go over this in the drivers' meetings, and I'm just going to go ahead and just. I'll try to like spell it out as best as they can <laughs> because it literally is an entire PowerPoint slide that goes on for about literally a minute and a half of them trying to explain it to the drivers every single time. So here we go. It's. <laughs> It said, in the event of a caution in the final laps, the race will go into overtime. NASCAR overtime is defined as any distance longer than the race distance. In the event of an overtime, the race will be done with a green, white, checkered finish. When the, what does it say? When the leader crosses the overtime line located <laughs> in the middle of the backstretch, the race is official. And the next flag, whether it be yellow or white, will end the race or something like that. And it's like, wait, what? Okay, so you're telling me that if I get going on the first lap, get to the backstretch, and then there's a wreck, then it's official. Right, right. And well, so, <laughs> Okay, are we forgetting that like 70,000 people show up to the race and want to see the leader come across the finish line? Because all the tracks sell tickets. What are the most expensive ones? Start finish. We'll tell you that much. We've paid for them and, and got uh, rained out of them. Yeah. <laughs> so Goodness you're telling gracious. me that you're going to finish a race because a lot of races come down to a green, white checker overtime finish. Now, a lot of times that mm-hmm. happens. You get them phantom caution, but <laughs> you're going to get a caution from the 13th place car spinning out. And now since Jimmy Johnson crossed the overtime line going into three, you just froze, <laughs> just froze the field. Yeah. And so everybody that's there at the race didn't get anything. There's definitely like a, all right, carry the one and second derivative minus C, and then you kind of get to right. <laughs> wherever. But no, but, but that whole Negative thing last B. year with the NASCAR <laughs> All-Star Race, if you haven't seen that in a while, go back and watch that. That is maybe the funniest, dumbest thing that I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. I've watched racing since I was five. So 25 years I've been watching NASCAR. I have never seen anybody or anything that confused everyone as much as the rules for that thing. I remember them them like they because they pulled out like the envelopes and stuff, right? And, and they were yeah. going, "All right." And then ninth through seventeenth will be determined by whatever's in this envelope. You going? What are you doing? <laughs> like I, you I had half the field that was like trying to sandbag, <laughs> but the other half was like, well, I don't know what's going on. And I think they interviewed a few drivers during the race and they were like, yeah, we don't really know what's happening, but <laughs> yeah. we're just going to keep riding around they here. Had, so I don't know. Truth. They had a celebrity open up that it was like the rock or somebody open up the envelope or so, <laughs> And you're going, man, for the first time in my life, I feel bad for Dale Waltrip. He has to like pretend this is what he wants to do. And, and Kozlowski's <laughs> build up to that for literally like two to three weeks was like, Oh, we've, you know, we've gotten together with the drivers. We've come up with something that is so unique and, and we just know you guys are going to love it. And then that just was the <laughs> dumbest thing that anybody had ever seen. It and it just, suck. it makes me start thinking like, okay, okay. Like perfect example. I was talking about this with a friend of mine the other day. <laughs> when somebody gives you a bad restaurant and they say, man, you got to go check out this place. It is so good, you've got to go. And then you go there, and it's terrible. Well, immediately, you just don't really trust that person to ever give you restaurant suggestions ever again, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So why do I trust them to come up with other stuff? Yeah. Well, the all-star race worked out great. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a line on the backstretch, and that's where the end of the race is now. Uh, oh shoot! <laughs> Why oh not? crap! Yeah, Here's let's what do we're it, gonna do, guys. We're going to run the first fifty laps forwards, and then the next fifty backwards. But it's just whenever <laughs> you get to the fiftieth lap, that's when you can turn around. So we'll just have <laughs> half the guys going one way and half the guys going the other way. <laughs> uh, so careful, you gotta, Tommy. You got to set your cars up neutral. Just for the All Star race because you don't know what way you're going to be going. It sounds like to me somebody in this in this room is running for president of of the <laughs> council. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh I know. man. So okay. all right. 
But also, real quick, one more final thought about this, and I'm not ripping about that anymore. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we say how important it is to make the chase uh, and how that is such a defining thing. And, you know, there's always, every year, there's like three or four or five guys that make the chase that probably didn't win a race, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, out of the 16. And it won't, be, if, it won't be Newman this year. He won one. Holy crap. Right. right. How about that? <laughs> no So kidding. what if you just made it to where the next year for the Clash – and for the all-star race, if you won a race, or sorry, if you just made the chase, you're in those two for the next year. Okay. Works so now that adds a little bit. Of, so like when you say, okay, how do you make the clash? You win a poll or you're in the chase. That works. That's fine. And, that, that and then for the all-star field. race, if you made the chase or you won a race that current year, then you're in. Yep. And then we'll do the open and we'll take a few more. We'll, whatever, we'll take the top you know, three or four from the open, and then we'll take a fan vote. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. You're good. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, well, you know how this works, Tommy. Strange with staying. You've been here, uh, what, what were we talking about? 5% of our episodes or uh, something yeah, like that? Over five, yeah. Over five now. So uh, you know how Strange with staying works. Um, I, you know, I. it's kind of a softball this time. Uh, how many times out of five do you uh, typically and uh, on average accidentally – Eat the sticker that comes on a piece of fruit. <laughs> that is a zero. Zero <laughs> times. Uh, and it's unfortunate because I was like, oh, this is going to be zero across the board, I think. Are, are we going to get zeros or Sherwin? Are you eating the stickers on the fruit? Because I never. Like, that's part never. Of the- so when this question came in, I was like, well, like, how do you not know to take the sticker off? Here, I'll, I'll make it controversial for you. <laughs> this is terrible. We're three dudes here. How many times have you fallen into the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Fallen into the toilet because the zero times because the lid was up precisely <laughs> right. zero times because I always check and that's the same thing with the, piece the of only fruit. times I I've <laughs> almost <laughs> right about the time that I thought I was supposed to be touching the t- <laughs> I put my hands down and went oh <laughs> okay. I forgot to put the lid down or the seat down <laughs> like I've never fallen into a toilet and I have never eaten the sticker on a piece of fruit. <laughs> Those it. things are congruent. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so I've, actually, I've I've sat on a loose toilet seat several times. Oh, that's that one, different. That's, that's different. different. That, will get, that will get your attention. Oh yeah, that's Big, like a grasshopper you in can a frying slide, pan. You can slide off a little bit and be like, what? <laughs> yeah, that will. Yeah, there's nothing that will surprise you more than that. <laughs> well, that's going to close us out, y'all. Um, we got some shout outs. Sherwin, the Lab Traffic Boys, Brandon and Tony, huh? Oh, yeah. Brandon Crowd and uh, Crew Chief. Brandon's on here. Tony. On the, uh, YouTube, yeah, those guys, uh, they've been a lot of fun. They've been awesome. They did their show last night. Uh, they've been very supportive of what we're doing, and we want to be very supportive of what they're doing. Absolutely. They did their 22nd episode last night. Awesome. So, Awesome to those They've been guys. killing us. Been killing it. Double uh, deuce. Uh, we want to thank the PTM Posse for 100 episodes. Can't believe it's been 100. And we're going to go ahead and shout out to the rest of the patrons. We named the uh, the you know official sponsors earlier. We're going to go ahead and say uh, the rest of the sponsors here. Kathleen McDonald, Penny Gray, Gabrielle Dree, Suzette McGuire, Har- Harrison Orr, Greg Whited Jr. at 42 underscore updates, Antonio Williams, Ken Goose, and... Jeff Gluck. <laughs> Jeff Gluck. Jeff Gluck. Y'all didn't know that. Sneaky son of a gun. <laughs> right. Sneaky. Right? Well, y'all know what to do. Uh, follow us at PTM Podcast. Uh, and uh, Tommy, take it away. End us out. PTM 100. The floor is yours. I'm proud of you guys uh, for sticking with it for this long. We were talking a little bit beforehand about uh, about just showing up every week. You know, the, the first step to uh, – to, uh, what was okay? I'm stealing this, by the way, from Chris Carter. So I want to make sure that I get it right. <laughs> he said the the first step to uh, being great is availability, um, and you guys have been available for a hundred episodes, and that is really cool. You guys have just uh, kept coming up, kept uh, kept digging, uh, and this thing is starting to build, and you can see it. You're starting to get more cred in the industry, and I'm just really happy for you guys. Man, uh, we we've had such a blast a hundred times now. Had such a blast. I can't, I, I'm sure when I've never, we've never hung up this thing and gone, well, that was a crap episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing that uh, continues to that's be. A, a, that's a lie because you literally let off with me. goes, man, that was a crap episode. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you did it with me like the, it was like the second one we did or whatever, the first one we did. 
That's uh, right off the bat, you're lying. But I appreciate the sentiment that you're trying to, t- to tell. Maybe it was always fun. It was always fun. Oh man, I uh, can't even talk. That's freaking hilarious because uh, it's true. But uh, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> what we were trying to convey is uh, that we uh, we never thought that this is what it would be. And uh, we never thought we'd have as much fun as we are doing this. And meet the And we people. never yeah. thought we would get so many really cool people to talk to. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah, and absolutely. that's just, I mean, that's where we're at with it. You know, group hug, group fist bump. Here we go. Let's uh, close this thing out. Y'all know what to do. Follow us at PTM Podcast. Uh, we're all over the social media, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. Y'all know where to find us. IG. That's right. As if I have to say it for the 100th time, follow me. I'm Tailgate Mayor uh, at Tailgate Mayor. And I'm Sherwin at Pregame ENG. And uh, we got some, uh, we got all kinds of crazy follow stuff. Follow Tommy at Tommy, Tommy Joe Martins. Absolutely. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, PTM Posse. You're the best from the hearts of our bottoms and the bottoms of our hearts. <laughs> we uh, we love you to death. Keep joining us. Here's to the next 100 episodes, and uh, we'll talk to you all next week. Ski! Thumbs up. There it is. All right. PTM 100. Tommy, you the man. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Man, it's always good to talk to you uh, guys. You know, that was awesome. Uh, I think you know. Last time you were on, you were like uh, PTM hundred. How about uh, how about I just join you for that? And it was like done, uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> PTM. Whoop. Cool, Sorry. guys. Well, like, you, whatever. You can just pencil me in about one every twenty, and uh, and I'll be perfect. there. Perfect, and we're there. Um, yeah, this is so much fun. Uh, what can I say other than uh, we got some? We got to figure out how to get to <laughs> Vegas. Obviously, you're. You may have an in. I'm there. going to Vegas. Uh, I'll, I'll Tommy. I'll uh, I'll text you or something like that. And yeah, uh, yeah, sounds uh, good. If you're around and you know just want to say hey and I can buy you a beer, then we'll uh, we'll do that. If you're not uh, if you're not, then you know no hard feelings. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd love to. Love awesome. to. I'd love to see you when you're out here. Awesome. Um, I'm uh, uh, I might have the beer. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the beard for vacation. Like I I kind of want to keep the beard, but I can't grow from here to here. So I have this kind of comb over thing going, right? So mm-hmm. with the comb over, hair looks good, man. Uh, you know, you know the one thing that I do because I haven't got the uh, haircut either because I have to do the comb over on the beard side. Uh, I'm kind of getting a mullet, like this yeah. is for real, you know. <laughs> and and there's some sort of like, hey, let me know when we're growing mullets because I will grow a guy. There's a mullet. <laughs> there's Just a for the f of it, right? Right. There's there's almost <laughs> some redneck cred here. Like every time I I, <laughs> I reach cred. back and I'm like, ooh, there's like a little bit of. I oh, it'll flick whoosh. up in the back yeah, yeah. if you grow it long enough. Going and I'm going, I'm I'm kind of liking this. Uh, Old I, duck tail. You know, you know how I was telling you guys you were getting respect in the industry. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> no, erased no. it. <laughs> whatever, whatever you got, you guys both come rocking in there with mullets. Just double. That. Oh, doubled. Oh, double. Sweet. Double that. Just double that respect. <laughs> awesome. All right. So mullets happening. <laughs> Tommy, uh, <laughs> as always, it's been a blast, man. Thanks so much. Well, sure, uh, dudes. Whatever yeah. you talk. Yeah, yes. this has been great. Grab you that second beer. Have some fun. <laughs> Thank you sure. for your time, bud. And the uh, right. and and the uh, t-shirts, man. We got to get the t-shirts. Yes, I'm we in. Got to get on the t-shirts. I'm in. Look, you guys will be you guys will be the first people I tell. All right, sweet. All right. Pitching. <laughs> See you guys. All right, man. All right, Tommy. And See you. PTM Podcast. We will talk to y'all next time. Thank you. So and uh, take care. PTM 100 in the books. Here's the next 100. Y'all are the best. Cheers. Boom. Let's cheers this thing. Close it out. See y'all. Skew.